Welcome to the Mind Grow Radio podcast storyteller series. I am your host, Stephanie Kaffin, and today we're joined by singer, songwriter, composer, recording artist, performer, Grammy nominee, the founder of Getting Started with Guitar, and creative designer in her own jewelry company, Lisa McCormick. We're going to be talking about authenticity and success and her journey as an entrepreneur. Welcome, Lisa, and thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I've been looking forward to this a lot. I just want to dive right into this because First of all, I love talking with you, and there's just so many things I want to learn. <laughs> One of the things is, in your life, the music business was a big part of it, from writing songs and on stage performances. You've recorded and collaborated, collaborated in studios around the country, released your own songs, and at one point been nominated for a Grammy. What does life look and feel like for you today compared to when you were first starting out on this journey? Wow, what an interesting question. Well, um, so to make a comparison, I have to go back to kind of what that journey was like. And that journey was um, very much driven by passion and by a knowing of, what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go. Um, And it wasn't a knowing in the sense of I made a choice to take on certain battles. It was a knowing just that this is the right thing for me to be pursuing in whatever way it needs to be pursued. And I'm open um, intuitively and spiritually to uh, you know, to hints and callings and, you know, go here, do this, call this person. Um, and the, the making, you know, making a, a successful career in the in the music business is a ton of work that goes way beyond um, actually creating and performing music. Um, so when you ask for a comparison, The first thing that comes to my mind when you mentioned that long list of things I had done was, (laughs) oh, my God, I was busy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God, I was tired. I got tired (laughs) after a while. Um, But I was, you know, I was younger then, and I was just like, you know, so freaking determined, you know, that, that, uh, you know, nothing was going to stop me. Um, So now... um, since I'm, I've moved. I've really moved on to doing other things. Um, I'm still very, very engaged in my work, um, in various aspects of work, and very much still, um, still led by callings and intuition, as opposed to, you know, hardcore planning. <laughs> And um, but I am not living in the back of my Subaru anymore. Um, <laughs> I am home. I have friends. I have a life outside of um, being a full full time musician, which is really a, a twenty four seven, three hundred sixty five day a year commitment. You mentioned being driven and that you were in that mindset of nothing was going to stop you. Mm-hmm. And I, I love that. Um, and did you have to create that mindset? Was that something that came naturally or did you, did you have to like practice being in that success mindset before you even got there? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, no, it just it just was part of it was just part of the the calling. It's like this you know, it became clear to me early in my adult life that I was not cut out for for working for other people. <laughs> and um, you know, that I really needed to be an independent um independent uh entrepreneur, artist, whatever. But um, I'm not a good employee. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm responsible. I show up on time. I do a good job. But I feel like I'm doing somebody else's work, and I really want to mm-hmm. be doing my own work. Um, actually, um, there were 
there were there was one very significant um roadblock thrown in my path um when I was right at the at the height of making my first album that really tested that that drive and um that's when I was I was 35 years old I was halfway through recording my debut album which is the one that would go on to get the Grammy nomination um but was struck down by a very serious uh spinal cord tumor that um just you know ground everything to my, to a halt for quite a long time um and by a long time I mean several months to a year um when you have momentum in the music business and then suddenly you disappear for a year it's not good <laughs> mm. um you know it's not good so i just i just you know i had to go through a long recovery i had to learn to walk again but believe it or not as soon as i could i got back out on the road and back out on stage on crutches on forearm crutches cuz i was just like I, nothing ain't going to stop me you know <laughs> even this not going to stop me. And I'm sure I freaked out a few audiences. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, my God, what's wrong with her? She's going to die, you know. And, um, uh, you know, but I would lay the crutches down on the on the stage and, and stand there and do my show and hope they all forgot about it and enjoyed it and uh, and continued on. So the drive is just, it's kind of, you know, use it or lose it. You know what I mean? Um in in the music business if you don't keep trying to pursue every opportunity um then uh, you just start to drown in the uh in the eyes of the of the audience and of the of the um presenters and um publicity and all that and i think sometimes that that happens in whatever whatever career we are in as an entrepreneur and we're faced with that that moment when we have to pivot and and start moving our creative energy in a new direction and one of the yeah. things that you did so gracefully and beautifully is you pivoted with your jewelry company and you started yeah. creating in a whole new way yeah and what you're creating is amazing. I'm honored to have one of your pieces. And but I just want to say that one of the things that I love about you is your authenticity. Whether you're performing music or doing um ukulele pop-ups or teaching people guitar or whatever, you are showing up always as as you, as who you are. And you just gave a great example of that when you went on stage with crutches. You just showed yeah. up. You were authentically you with no apology. And I love that about you. So I just wanted to say that because that's a really amazing um, quality well, to have. You. Yeah. I don't, I don't really know how to do it differently, but I I appreciate your comment. And I agree you know, I feel like I owe it to wherever I'm showing up to and whoever I'm showing up to to be fully present, you know, to, and, to be fully present for, for what I bring to offer and for even more so for what, um, you know, what interactions we can have. How How can I help these people? How can I bring some joy into their life today? Um yeah, I, I am fully present for that. And you have pivoted now into Talisman Groove, your new jewelry yeah. company. And, yeah. And, oh, my God, I <laughs> love your pieces. Like, every time you put something up, I'm like, oh, my God, I want that. Oh, my God, I want that. It's just <laughs> so um energetically enhanced and the descriptions that you give with the stones and the inspiration that called you to create it it's 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 beautiful work and oh thank you thank you it's really it's i mean i could not be more surprised at at this <laughs> um this was kind of a um a a 
little tiny calling. I had a setback with the spinal cord um, situation um, right at the turn of the new year. Um, and it was, you know, it was it was COVID and it was the dark of winter and and there was no place to go and there was nothing to do. And suddenly I was, you know, I was, my mobility had become further challenged. And um, I had, I bought on Etsy a hand-stamped aluminum bracelet that said the word hope. And the minute I got it, I wore it all the time. And it's like I just, you know, my body is changing. Things are going on that I don't understand and others don't either. But what I have to have constantly is hope that this is, you know, we're going to get through this and it's going to be okay. And um, so I wore this hope bracelet all the time. And I kept looking at it, and then one time it was like, "Wait a minute, I want to try to make one. <laughs> I want to try to make this. You know, like this thing doesn't just exist. It was actually made by another woman uh, in her workshop for me. And why couldn't I learn to do such a thing? So um, I ordered a little starter kit." Um, you know, a little tiny hammer and <laughs> little letters and um, and uh, just, you know, started banging things out. And I was, it's really hard to learn. Um, there's so much, um, there's so much detail in the hand, in the, in the handwork. It's very similar to learning a musical instrument. Mm. Um, in terms of the nuance of, you know, how, how tightly do you hold this thing? How, at what angle do you hold this thing? Um, how do you hold this thing so that it doesn't ergonomically bother your shoulders or your wrists? You know, or um, how do you get it to to create the result that you want? And so I just kind of dove in as a winter something to do, and kept spending more money <laughs> buying more. <laughs> Oh, well, I certainly need that design, and I certainly need those letters, and I certainly need... Um, and then um, and then, kind of a shift began to occur when I felt like skills had gotten good enough that I could sort of improvise. Um, and I think that's the work that you're talking about, um, where I could just kind of let an artistic muse work through me. And I will sit and look at a blank piece of metal and say what what do you want to be what tell me show me give me give me give me a hint what do you want to be and i'll consider one design stamp or another and i'll get a no i'll get a no and then i'll get a yes and i'll pick it out of the pick it out of my box and i'll lay it onto the metal and i'll say well where do you want to go and it'll show me you know and uh and then I pound it in there with a good hammer hit, and then, well, where does the next one want to go? And so it's really, um, really fascinating process of following the muse. I am, I could not be more untrained. <laughs> um, and in in some ways, I think that's good because I'm working out of a place of beginner's mind and of total innocence, and no rules. You know, I never learned any rules about art, so. Um, so I have no rules to follow and I have no rules to break. That is so powerful what you're sharing right now because it leads back to that authenticity. You are just following your intuitive guidance. You're not worried about what the masses are saying or what what the world tries to shout at you of how you're supposed to be or what you're supposed to do. You are just letting your creative expression be free to express Yeah. and taking the steps as you're guided to do so, not because of some plan or some, you know, some yeah. laid out thing that you're supposed to follow. Right. And exactly. I, I love that. And I think, when we do that is when we have the best results right that yeah. in life well that's that's true i'm i'm absolutely blown away by the the response you know when people see the work 
you know, I made this thing, I listened to the muse, I let it I let it guide me through until the piece told me, Okay, Lisa, I'm finished now, you know. Stop stop tweaking me. <laughs> I'm done. Um and then someone will look at it and be like, Oh my God, that is beautiful. Or and, you posted the pendant that I have. You posted it and I'm like, That's that's mine. That's for yeah. me. Like I yeah. have to have that. And I didn't set out to create it's something it. beautiful. <laughs> I didn't set out to create something that people would like, you know. I just <laughs> I I'm it's it's a, just a fascinating um sense of being open to to um there's I mean similar in music and I'm just learning this. It's like the piece and many artists will say this, the piece already exists on some level and you mm. know, I'm just chipping it out of I'm just pulling it out of this piece of metal. I start with a blank piece of metal and it tells me what it wants to be. And uh, that is just uh I'm as surprised so as anyone else. <laughs> What would you say was the greatest lesson that you've learned as an entrepreneur through all of your experiences that you've had up to now? Oh, that's a great question. Um, that you really do, ha- if you want to be an entrepreneur, if I, you know, I'm talking about myself, um, I have to learn about that, and I do have to take that seriously, and I do have to go more into a serious planning mode and, you know, what 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 do I need to do next in order to make this viable as a business, whether it's jewelry or um, leading destination retreats or um, teaching classes in music or being a performer, um, what do I need to know about social media? What do I need to know about, um, you know, promotion and graphics and all these kinds of things? So it, it does, you know, I did study hard on that level because I didn't want to just do you know, do kind of cool things and have them sit there. <laughs> mm, you right. know, it's like if I'm serious, I, you know, this is, I am self-supported. I have never worked, you know, it's been, I haven't worked for anyone else in decades. So if I don't make it into a viable business of some, of to some degree, then, you know, then I'm just a sinking ship. So. Right. Um, What's the alternative really? Yeah. There is, you know, you know yeah. Complete poverty. Um, and uh, I have a mortgage to pay, you know. <laughs> um, and you know, I live I live with uh, you know low to moderate income, and that's perfectly fine with me. But um, but yeah, that that question, Stephanie, about the entrepreneurialism is re- really did tap into a different part of the brain. And it's like I need to read some books, I need to study, I need to understand. Um, how to sort of how to how to build the tribe around of people who are interested in your work, you know, and then and then make it available to them. And mm, so what I'm hearing is like, be will you were willing to learn? You had a willingness to learn what you needed to learn, and what you needed to learn was showing up for you. Yeah, because you followed your intuitive guidance. Yeah. So it made sense when you put that out there that the next thing that you needed to learn would show up, like how to how to recognize your tribe and how to yeah. create an audience for your new work. And exactly, yeah. I mean, I considered it kind of. It was a period of it of a good couple of years of, of pretty deep study, and um, and it, I considered it kind of my my self engineered master's degree. <laughs> Mm, great way you to know, look at it. It's like it's like I I yes I can play music yes I can teach music I didn't know yet that I could make jewelry but um you know but uh, I I need to know how to make this into um more of you know in the music business it's so easy to get trapped into oh drive two hundred miles and we'll pay you fifty bucks you know to. Mm play our coffee house, you know, it's just a bunch right. of, 
you know, there's so much of that, and it's like I have to, I have to find other ways to um, make my work available to people and make it create income for me. And a lot of that, you know, mostly had to do with using the internet in various ways and videos, uh, instructional videos, instructional programs stuff that people would buy that would create, um, you know, passive income for me. It's like I create mm-hmm. the, pro- the program and then and then it's available, you know. Um, yeah, so it was a, it was definitely a, a serious study in, uh, you know, in sort of how to, how to turn what you're doing into a more of a viable financial situation. Do you have some tools from your own personal growth toolbox that you'd be willing to share, like a practice or mantra or book or anything that you've used to help you stay centered and connected to that intuitive guidance that has led you down this path to success? Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say my tool is listening. Um listening because I think that, you know, whether they're angels or the muse or whatever, or God or the God of art or whatever it is, um, there is, there is, um, there are messages, there are um, suggestions, not necessarily in words, but maybe in images. And so what I use to tap into that is just the intention to be quiet and probably lie down, cover my eyes, um, and just say, okay, I'm here. I'm here. Let's, you know, I'm listening. So be present. Just be Just Be, be present. present and create space for being present and create. I don't really do well maintaining a routine like a, you know, I'm going to meditate for 20 minutes or I'm going to, you know, do the pendulum or I'm going to, you know, <laughs> all those things are fun and cool, but, I, you know, I don't do well maintaining it, um, the self-discipline around it. But so what works for me and what I do do well with is just to say, okay, I'm going to go, I call it doing a lie there. I'm going to go lie there. <laughs> mm. You're not allowed to, and during a lie there, you're not allowed to fall asleep and you're not allowed this is this is a key element you're not allowed to try to figure anything out mm. if you find your mind starting to problem solve and try to figure things out that's when you have to go back to reset um and just say no i'm just listening i'm just listening i'll figure things out later you know oh that's so good what a powerful tool Whew, this is such a great conversation. So I have uh, one last question. What advice would you give to those listening who might be just starting out as an entrepreneur or just beginning to believe that they might want to head out on that journey to creating a life that they they love because maybe they don't they don't feel like a good employee or they don't like working for others. That was my case too. I'm a terrible employee and I there's no other way for me to be other than an entrepreneur. Yeah. So for somebody who's just beginning, what would your advice be? I'm I'm thinking that the the ideal thing would be to find someone you know or that you could connect with who has done something that looks appealing to you and doable to you and relatable to you. Um, You know, you're not going to go from having, you know, from waiting tables to, you know, oh, I wrote one email and in came $50,000, you know. I mean, (laughs) you don't want to go with these sort of magical, uh, wild entrepreneurial trainers. You want to find someone who's doing something that, like yeah, I I could relate to that. I want to I want to make soaps and sell them, or I want to you know do uh, I want to become a consultant of some sort, whatever. Um, and see if you can really 
A, study their business a little bit, and B, connect with them personally um, and ask for some advice. And um, they may or may not be, you know, willing to give it up, but it's worth a try. I think the, you know, to dive into, you know, how to become an entrepreneur on, you know, YouTube or whatever, you're just going to drown in, you know, in too much information and too much confusion and too many things Mm. that aren't necessarily a priority in the beginning. And you say, oh, my God, I've got to do all this SEO. Well, well, hold on, you know, (laughs) like, let's back up, you know. Um, So I would say, if possible, find someone or someone's, that you can kind of tap into that that inspire you that feel like, huh, look what they're doing. I like that. That yeah, I, I could feel that. And um, see what you learn. See what you notice about their business and and their PR and their graphics and their communications and and see if they'll talk with you. That is great advice. And you might be surprised um, how willing some people are to share advice with those who really want to know. I found that surprising when I started doing interviews. I didn't think anybody would would answer my emails, you know, but I yeah. but I was surprised at how um how open people are to sharing, but the the fear is asking because we're always afraid of rejection, right? But Yeah. 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 And on, you know, like on Facebook there are groups. There are some really good groups um that I belong to that are mine happen to be around um either women entrepreneurs or introverted <laughs> entrepreneurs um and so there's some really good great groups there that would be another thing for a new a newbie to tap into and just read you know just read what people are asking about what they're talking about what they're celebrating what they're saying whoops about, you know, how they're right. helping each other out. Who are the helpers? You know, who are the people who who are offering, you know, some some smart and kind advice and um mm. and then you feel a bit of a part like you're a part of a community. Um uh, it, it does make a, a difference when you does. surround and yourself. And then you have when people. you have a question you can ask it, you know, and people mm-hmm. will, will answer it. And um, so you're not just like, ah, I'm out here all on my own, you know. Right, <laughs> right. Lisa, where can people go to learn more about you and what you're doing these days? Oh, boy. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Facebook's a good one. Um, I've, You know, when you talk about all these different <laughs> <laughs> These different endeavors, like the Lisa the performer, Lisa the songwriter, Lisa the consultant, Lisa the teacher, Lisa the jeweler, you know, so far there's no, like, Lisa Central at this moment. <laughs> um, but there is lisamccormick.com is my, is my Lisa Central. Um, however, we have to get a little mention of the jewelry business up there. <laughs> And the jewelry business is called Talisman Groove, all one word, um, dot com. And that that uh, website is uh, currently actively under construction. Excellent. So people will be able to tune in and find your wares and take a look at your beautiful creations that you have available. And in the meantime, while that's being built, Go check out lisamccormick.com to learn more about today's amazing guest. Today's show has been brought to you by CBD BioCare, the brand you can trust. And if you want to try it, head over to stephaniecathan.com forward slash hemp and take advantage of the free offer I've got for you over there. Thank you, Lisa McCormick, for growing our minds and sharing your story today. Mm -hmm. Please go check out her music. Please go check out her jewelry and just tune into her amazing energy. Lisa, you are awesome. I'm so glad you are in my circle. Oh, and, Stephanie, thank you so much. I feel the same way about you. It was so great to uh, do this interview and great to see you in person recently. That was a that, that was, was that was quite a treat. That was so fun. It was so fun. 
Everybody, thanks for being here. I want to thank our listeners for tuning in today. And until we meet again, keep shining in your brilliance, everybody. See you next time. Bye-bye.